Let's get a look at it. Be careful. Get you a good shot of those limbs. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get you a good shot of its structure. Catalpas like to grow like that. Okay. Mm hmm. You got a good. You got a good uh, picture of the whole tree. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Are you recording me? Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. This this is a small catalpa tree. It's growing right here in my chicken lot. Right beside my chicken house and as you can see it's fairly stately looking and fairly nice shape uh, a lot of catalpas don't come out with a real good shape some come out pretty good shaped depends on all storm damage and lightning they're bad about drawing lightning catalpa trees will draw lightning and the reason is is because their roots go so deep and they're almost always next to water or a water strata. And they got a tap root. They're a tap root tree. Like our uh, frog pond. Like our frog pond back there. This is a wet area right here because you can see my drainage ditch and I got a frog pond over there. It acts like a, a, settling, a settling pond to keep, to collect the settlement, sediment before it goes out of here because Western PA here has got terribly eroding soil it's the finest silt clay i believe i ever saw and it erodes real bad it all it's such a fine silt clay it will actually fluidize right into water and just stay that way and hardly settles out and it won't do it during a rain and you get a lot of a mud water runoff here so that's a settling pond anyhow i didn't plant this here catalpa tree it come in here as a volunteer, probably by the birds. Wild birds probably drug it in here. The closest next catalpa tree to this is uh, half a mile away, believe it or not. I know where they all are. Catalpa trees are native, according to the National Audubon's tree book. Of course, these, these here plant books have been changing a lot over the last 50 or 60 years. They're changing terms and they're changing some of the uh, native habitat and so forth. It's a little bit confusing to me being an old guy. I studied this stuff 60 years ago. But Southern Michigan evidently is the home range of the catalpa tree. That's their native habitat southern and central Michigan mm -hmm. they love water <clears throat> they got big tap roots they go to water they get struck by lightning a lot but they're one of the they're one of the if not the slowest rotting wood in the world um, my granddad uh, talks about the fellas used to use them for fence post and they don't rot away they make good fence posts and up in that part of the country wisconsin and michigan they used them quite a bit because they don't have a lot of black locusts up there as we do here black locust makes a tremendous fence post naturally but catalpa won't hold a staple very good you nail a nail or staple into catalpa post and in three or four years they throw the staple out and your bob wire is loose hmm. it's the natural fiber of the wood does not like to hold a fastener so you wire your bob wire onto catalpa post you wire them up and cinch them up tight and you're just wasting your time trying to staple them yeah they'll come loose now the Dutchies, as I call them, the Amish, I've talked to two or three old Amish guys. Now I'm, I'm, I'm over 70 and I like to pick their brains every now and again because I think I know a lot about wood and the only people around here I know anything that, that, that think they know anything about wood are the Amish. Mm -hmm. I was talking to an Amish guy one time and I said, what about these catalpa trees? Because we was talking about posts, you know, red elm post and black locust post and and um, post oak post, post oak they use down in the south and how they used to go and char, fire char, char the bottoms of their post and get about a quarter inch of charcoal on them and that keeps the bacteria in the ground from eating on the wood. Smart, yeah. Because charcoal is bacteria impervious, okay? And he said, well, 
best that I can know, catalpa rots at about a rate of one quarter inch to a hundred years. Oh wow, so it's pretty... So it is almost impervious to rot when used in those conditions. Now what about firewood? It's piss poor firewood. It will not make a good fire. It's like, it's like uh, piss elm or, or uh, quaking aspen. Uh, some of those woods, they just sit there and glow and look at you and they don't put off much heat. It don't burn, it won't leave coals. Mm -hmm. It's not a good firewood, but it's a tremendous fish uh, fence post. It, it just don't rot away. See? And, and I, know, I know a lot of catalpa posts that are 100 years old and are still solid. So you couldn't store it as, so you could store it as firewood, but it wouldn't work as firewood. It don't make good firewood. Yeah. It makes post, good post, and it'll make timber to put on the ground uh, uh, in ground contact or even in the ground for barns. I guess up in that part of the country, they, they, cut, they cut it for um, blocks or <clears throat> what they call bolts. A bolt is a certain cut block length to set barns on and set corn cribs on it and old farm machinery buildings, what they call a machine shed. They would actually set them on those and it's not gonna rot. because it don't rot. But you can't use it as building material because it won't hold nails or anything like it that. It don't like to hold, it don't like to hold, well, now if it's, if it's in a, a protected area under a roof where there's no water expansion contraction i don't know that well, could, could it you... might not it might hold a metal fastener better but out in the elements as a fence post it's it not does not do it. it don't hold well, a could fence you stable. coat it if it was used as a building material to maybe try and hold that moisture out um yeah you could well i don't know about that probably it, be it, too cost if ineffective you, if, if you're you trying to cut coat it, every single if you cut it you'll find that the fiber on catalpa is real fine mm. it's real fine fibered grain kind of like an elm elm has real fine fibered grain and you know you can't hardly split an elm a slippery elm you ain't gonna hand split it you're gonna have to use a machine to split it because the fiber in it cross grains it's like the weaving the weaving pattern of a basket that's the way the grain of a slippery elm looks and mm -hmm. there's two or three other trees that way and but I don't think I don't know whether catalpa is basket weaved across, but its fiber is very small and it just it just has a tremendous <coughs> uh, uh, ability to uh, withstand rot and decay. I've seen it underneath barns as logs, where they just laid down the log on the ground and built on top of it, and then used it for a sleeper beam. In that position, they call that a sleeper. Uh, I've seen uh, slippery elms. American chestnut and catalpa underneath 150 year old houses hmm. for sleeper beams. And they didn't nail to those. They notched them and laid their floor like joist into a, like a cabin. And they laid them in a notch and drove a wooden peg in them. Okay. They bored a hole in them and drove a wooden so peg like in them. So like a real old fashioned nail. So, it, yeah, it's so not metal, so it's not They done that out. on American chestnut and elm both and the and the catalpa. catalpa. They'd bore a hole in there with an old bracing bit and take a peg, hickory peg, preferably, and or an elm peg, and they'd drive them in there and that just pegged them where they wanted them to hold them. They're not nailed. Mm. No, on them sleeper beams, the majority of them I've been underneath houses that was built in 1840. Uh, houses been built before the Civil War. And I was in a house that my daughter bought here two years ago. It was built in 1860 seven just after the civil war it's a plank house and it's got sleeper beams under it done that exact way one's a chestnut and one's an elm okay but this here just don't rot now it has great big heart-shaped leaves and it blooms late it blooms in june it's one of the last trees to come out it don't like frost it gets frost real easy so it's an indicator tree when the leaves get leafed out on a catalpa the ground's warm, more than warm enough to plant bean beans it's above 60 it's 65 or above degrees that's an indicator about catalpa because they don't come out to that ground warms up over 60 it won't even bud so it tells you when to farm it if... it tells you about farming beans white oaks tell you about farming corn okay. white oaks come out and, and when white oaks get to 
you know, I, I did this in another video. When they get a leaf on them the size of a mouse ear, the ground's warm enough for corn. It's above 56 degrees. Okay. Okay. Now, Catalpa has a great big heart-shaped leaf, and it blooms, has pretty flowers on it, and creates these big old bean-looking things that look like giant green beans, but that's what, that's not. It's the Catalpa seed pod. Now, this tree don't have any on it this year because it... it um, came out late and 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 we got a late frost and it did not bloom hardly worth a darn just barely and i don't see any seed pods on it no no but it's I. got big leaves and i'm going to show you something else out about catalpa trees that fishermen love this is a fisherman the most trick. important thing now, the hillbillies all know about this and a bunch of yankees do too because i up in indiana i've run into a lot of guys that uh, did this, and we'll look and see if we can find a worm. Oh, I saw one on the ground earlier, but I don't know where it's gone They're called now. Catalpa worms, and they come in and usually in July. Now, this is the 1st of August, but I've seen worms now about three days, and there's some worms on here. They're small, still too small to use for fishing, but they'll grow up to be about two and a half, two, an inch and a half to two and a half inches long, and uh, almost as big around as a pencil and they are some of the best fish bait you will ever use small mouth bass Let's see if i can find one perch oh here's one right here dad um right about here yeah see get a good shot of that worm oh yeah now he's already grown a half inch in about three days that's yeah, a catalpa I mean, worm he's a he's a real good size well he's not i mean he's not big enough for fish bait no but he's, he's a, not big enough for fish bait yet but in another week or two he will two weeks he will be mm -hmm. in three weeks they'll be getting gone they go into their metamorphosis and fall off the tree and turn into a cocoon somewhere and then they turn into a moth that moth comes in here at night and lays them eggs here's some worm damage right here i don't see the worm but that's where a worm's been eaten yeah there's some on here bluegill Oh, here's another Red one eared here. sunfish. Perch. Get a really, perch. You really gotta look for them. Yellow perch. Smallmouth bass. There's one hiding right in there. Will not, they'll tear your line off your pole when if you're, you're using catalpa worms. Your wonderful. bobber won't even hit the water before they're on it. They love That's it. That's how much they love catalpa worms. So, oh, here's for, another one. So far, you, uh, you guys that like to fish, use catalpa worms. Yankees that probably don't know about that too much. That's the story about catalpa trees and catalpa worm fishing. Yeah, use them if you can because they are really good. There's a whole good, you know, there's one right there, one, uh, oh, where's that one? And they are way up high in the there. tree. They go all the way up to get right them. Right it's a group you of have three to get right you there. cane poles. Uh, 16 20 foot cane pole and poke them down or climb the tree and I'm too old to be climbing trees anymore <laughs> we used to climb them when I was a young buck we'd climb them trees and and collect them and shake them out we could sell them babies in town for fish bait for about three cents a piece uh, six uh, 65 years ago you need to guys, a bit of profit. Lo guys loved them Nothing like catalpa There's worms. There's a little one right there. There's a good little group right well, there. There's a here. little tiny one right here. You see, he's just got started, and he's got him a little hole started right there. Yeah. Look at him. See, he's not much they got little black and yellow splotches on them. Oh, yeah, they look like thumbnail. they get big. They look very intimidating, like they'll sting the hell out of you, but they don't sting. They're harmless. Even though they've got that big spike coming out of their yeah. ass. Yeah. They're absolutely harmless. That's all just a camouflage to keep you off of them. Catalpa tree. There you go.